drum now. <laughs> if you have a child that is um, able to come and join me up front, we're going to take time to read a story this evening. So come on up. You'll get a treat when you leave. Come on up, Kaylee. All right. So beautiful. You can have a seat. Why don't you sit in front of me so you can see the book? Great. I love it. Hello. Come on up so you can see. Everyone looks so beautiful in your Christmas clothes. Are they itchy and scratchy? Well, that's how they're meant to be. Welcome. I guess I got more over here. I'll turn this way. Oh, hello, ladies. Come on up. Come on up. You want to see Ellie? Okay. All right. Come on up, Landon. We got space for you. All right. Here we go. Those candles look tempting, don't they? Okay. Where's my ca- Mr. Matt is like the candle crew. He's the uh, fire brigade here. So we're going to read a story called The First Christmas Night. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. That is from Isaiah 9, 6. Twas the very first Christmas when all through the town not a creature was stirring, there was not a sound. The moon shining bright in the heavens so high gave the luster of midday to the Bethlehem sky. The animals were nestled in warm, cozy places with looks of contentment on each of their faces. And Mary and Joseph, so tired from the road, had just settled in to a humble abode. To a Bethlehem stable they had traveled with care. They knew that their baby would soon be there. And then in the stable, a baby's first cry, peace on earth, goodwill, redemption is nigh. He had not a crib, but in a manger instead, the tiny new baby laid down his sweet head. Mary looked down at his cute little nose and silently counted ten fingers and ten toes. As shepherds kept watch on a small nearby hill, their sheep were all silent and sleepy and still. When suddenly in the sky there arose such a sight, one angel, then many, appeared in the night. The heavens rejoiced as their story unfurled, a baby, a savior, has been born to the world. So the shepherds arose to search for the place to get a close look at the sweet baby's face. Do you see it? You see it, Griff? Look. Yes. Oh, her necklace is scratchy, so she would like to take it off. (laughs) Where's Dad? (laughs) Little help. Here he comes. Here, I'm going to leave it because your sisters, you match so pretty. Okay. Fashion emergencies take precedent. Okay. Then out of the east there came royalty, whose mission mission was finding the Savior, you see. When they finally found the babe they had sought, gold, frankincense, and myrrh were the gifts they had brought. So the wise men bowed down and praised his sweet name. Soon all those who heard would rejoice that he came. And now we know and can say with delight, Jesus was born on that first Christmas night. Is that a good story? Yes. As you go home today and tomorrow morning and you're opening up gifts with your family, let's remember that the best gift we have ever received was when baby Jesus came to earth for us. Right? All right. Mr. Matt has some candy canes that he's going to hand out. So make sure you get one of those before you go back. And parents, you can come and find your child. Hello, Cornerstone. We're so glad you're here tonight. You're welcome to sing with us as we go on. Oh, come all ye faithful. 
joyful and triumphant. O oh, come ye, O oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold Him, born the King of angels. O oh, come, let us adore Him. O oh, come, let us adore Him. O oh, come, let us adore Him.
get the king to the people everywhere Listen to what I say Pray for peace, people everywhere Listen to what I
Good. Yeah, you can. We're going to light some candles. Uh, if you did not receive candles on the way in, there are some baskets in the back. You have permission to head back and uh, get a candle for you or the people that you are with if you have not done so yet. Well, welcome tonight. Thank you for joining us. Merry Christmas. Uh, my name is Eric. I'm the pastor here at Cornerstone, and uh, this service is one of my favorite services of the year. Um, I, I have a theory about candles. Uh, I, I think that candles just kind of make everything better. Um, I was thinking about that if... Um, you know, certainly uh, I love gathering with our church family to worship, but when we have this service and we have the candles, it just kind of sets a tone and the mood in the room here that just makes this service that much better. Um, if you have dinner with someone that you love and you have candles or a candle, all of a sudden that, that's a good thing, but then when you have a candle, it's like a great thing. You know, it changes the mood of the meal and, uh, and then, you know, cake. Anybody like cake out there? You have cake and then you add candles to it and you have a birthday cake and it's even better. And I was thinking about like why, like what is it about that? Now I'm sure there's a bunch of reasons for that, but I think one of the reasons why candles make things better is simply the position of the light. Uh, so much of our lighting comes from above. In our architecture, lights are typically in the ceilings coming down. And there's something about getting light to kind of come down in front of your face in front of the face of the person that you're across from, that changes the perspective of that situation, the room that you're in, that meal that you're having. In John chapter 12, it says this, Jesus is talking and he says, I have come into the world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. See, Jesus talks a couple different places in the gospel of John about how he is the light that comes down to us. And Jesus' life here as the light here on earth provides us with a new perspective and a new way of seeing things. The gift of Jesus promises us a way out of our darkness. If we're really honest about life and uh, what we experience, a lot of times it's confusion, chaos, darkness, but Jesus promises that he's going to be a light, some, someone that changes the perspective for us. You know, one light can light up a room. I'm going to try to do this with uh, this in my hand here. You know, there's times when I'm in the room here and uh, throughout the week and I have to travel through this room for whatever reason. Maybe I left something out here on a Sunday and I come through and I, I get my cell phone out. Maybe you've done this. Uh, you turn that little light on on the back of your phone for your camera and uh, suddenly, what is pitch black in here, all of a sudden, I can see. And it gives me the ability to navigate and get through. You know, um, when we have a light like that, we can see it lights up a room in one sense. But if we take this light and pass it on to others, suddenly, the light becomes brighter and brighter. I'm going to ask a few folks who are going to help me here today to, to join me up front. And uh, we're going to pass this light on. Because when Jesus came into this world as the light of this world... He came here not just to be a light away from us, but to be a light that comes close to us, to come near to us so that we can experience that light. And then we can then share that light with the people around us. What we're going to do is uh, these gentlemen are going to go through the aisles and they're going to begin to light the ends of the rows. And uh, kids, if you have glow sticks in your busy bags, now's the time to get those glow sticks out. And uh, we're going to go ahead and spread this light through this room. Now, I know we've got some stage light on right now. Now, I know that we've got some candles already here. But what's really powerful about this, in a moment, we're going to sing O Holy Night together. And I want us, as we sing O Holy Night to, to, together, I, we have a tendency in a room like this to look forward to the front. But would you do yourself a favor and look around the room a little bit? Because it's stunning to me to see all of the light that is shared and spread when everyone has a candle. So today, as we sing this song, as we sing O Holy Night together, let's marvel at the child who comes promising to bring light to us. Let's hold up our lights as a symbol of our willingness to bear his light, to receive the light of Jesus. And let's commit, as we sing this song, O Holy Night, to share the light of Jesus 
with those who are around us. Because as we have experienced darkness, so have others. But as we come together as a people of God, people who commit ourselves to follow Jesus, just like there's darkness in the world, suddenly when we begin to bear our light, just like this room is right now about halfway through, we begin to spread and reveal the love of Jesus and the light of his word and his goodness to those who are around us. So we're going to let just a couple more rows get their lights and pass those on, and we're going to sing O Holy Night together.
you can blow your candles out now, that would be good. O Holy Night is uh, probably my favorite Christmas song. Um, I love the emotion and the heart of it. On the, on the one hand, that song communicates kind of the longing and the desires of our heart. That one line says, long lay the world, long lay the world in sin and in error, pining. Now, pining is kind of an old word, but it means to, uh, to suffer. A lot of times it means to suffer from sadness. There's a longing that that song communicates. But it also communicates joy and relief, the joy and relief that Jesus brings because of his birth. It says in the song, a thrill of hope. You ever have that moment where you've caught something joyful and there's a thrill that rises up inside of you? That's what the song is saying, the birth of Jesus provides for us. And then, of course, that line where it says, fall on your knees. The experience of Jesus' birth should cause us to worship. It should cause us to be in wonder and in awe of the great gift that we've received. The Gospel of Luke tells us about this first Christmas, this holy night that we've just been singing about. Of course, we're probably familiar with the story. There were shepherds in a field and they were watching their sheep when all of a sudden an angel appeared before them and said, great news for you. Uh, The Savior, Jesus, has been born. He's in Bethlehem and you're going to go find him there. He's been wrapped in claws and he's lying in a manger. And then after that, angel gives that pronouncement, then we are told a whole group of angels joined that initial first angel, and it says this in Luke chapter 2, verses 13 through 14. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Now, this heavenly uh, host is actually a, a heavenly army. This is the word that's used to describe a, a large army that's there. And what I said earlier about candles, giving a different perspective to things, I think is pertinent for us to understand here in what happened with Jesus' birth. Because at Jesus' birth, the world was given a new perspective. These shepherds are some of the lowest, lowest people in all of society, yet angels coming from the highest places are the ones that are there to announce to these people who are basically nobodies this great message of this birth, of this child. And they're an army that's coming here, but they're not an army that's there to declare war, but this army of angels is there to declare peace. They announce the arrival of this child, but it's more than just a birth announcement, They're announcing the birth of a king, and not just any king, but the king, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And this king that they announce is not going to be found in a royal palace, but instead he's going to be found in a stable laid in probably a stone, a watering trough where the animals were drinking from. That's the perspective that these angels are giving to these shepherds on that day. And it's that sort of unexpected, upside down change of perspective that's highlighted all throughout Jesus' life. In his teaching throughout his life, Jesus upends our expectations and he shows us the way of love and forgiveness. Throughout his life, Jesus didn't focus his attention on the notable, those people who could do things for him, but instead he focused his attention on the forgotten and the broken, the lost, and the rejected, and those who needed to be served. And the reason why it was a holy night is because of this change of perspective that his birth brought. The angels sing really about two things here. They they sing about glory to God in the highest heaven, and then they, they sing, secondly, of peace on earth towards men. Have you ever been at a Christmas gathering or a birthday party or somewhere where gifts are being exchanged and and somebody gives like the perfect gift for somebody else? You know that person's personality, you know maybe something that they need or they wanted and that person opens the gift and they're surprised and they're, they're overjoyed by the gift that they give but you as kind of a third party to that interaction, you can't help but just be like, man, bravo. Great job on that gift. You ever seen that? There's just times where somebody gets someone the perfect gift. And I I think that's kind of what's happening here with these angels. 
These angels have come with this message about the arrival of Jesus, and their response is this song, glory to God in the highest of heavens. Bravo, God. This is the perfect gift. Of all the things that humanity needed, this, this is it. Like, there's nothing else. This is the perfect gift. Great job, Jesus, uh, God. Jesus is the best gift you could have given. But they don't just sing uh, and, and declare praise to God. They, they, they give praise to God because of the gift. And the gift is, is, is this. It's the second part. That there is now peace available to those who are on earth. And this peace isn't just an absence of violence or conflict or wars. This isn't just simply a peace between people, though that is a natural outflow of the gift of Jesus. What's more important is the peace that comes between men and God. In the day that this was taking place, there was a different kind of peace that was often talked about. It was called the Pax Romana, or the Roman peace. The Romans had a way of bringing peace to the nations around them, and it came through a sword. (laughs) They would show up to a new nation and say, hey, we've got our army behind us. We want to have peace with you, and you're going to do what we say. (laughs) And if they said no, they saw the swords of their army, and they were obliterated. That's just how the Roman peace was. It wasn't really peace. It was simply the way that they kind of, you know, made nice on what they were actually doing to subject the peoples around them. But Jesus comes in with a totally different perspective of peace. He arrives because if we're honest, if we're honest about our lives, the violence that we experience in our relationship with God was not due to him being violent against us, but it was us rejecting him as king. And because of that, we deserved judgment for that. In fact, Romans Chapter 6, verse 23 says, the wages, the things we earn because of our sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus coming as a baby is the opportunity for you and I to have peace with our creator when we don't deserve it. Our experience here at Christmas isn't just about nice lights and some nice songs and some nice melodies, but it's about a holy night. It's about a night where God came close to us, where he loved us so much. He said, you know what? All the violence that you've done to me, instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my son and he's going to experience the violence of the cross so that you don't have to. Jesus came to live the life that we couldn't live. He died the death that we deserved on the cross so we could experience the peace that we could never earn. In fact, the peace that we rejected through our sin. That's what Jesus did for us. And so when we talk about Christmas, we can't not talk about Easter and what Jesus did on our behalf on the cross. That's the peace that he provides for us. So what I want to encourage you to do today, we're going to sing a couple more songs, but if you're here and you're far from God, maybe you feel like there's been a lot of violence between you and God because you've rebelled, you've kind of made your own decisions, you've lived your own life, you've kind of done your own thing. Tonight, I want you to know that through the arrival of a baby over 2,000 years ago, Jesus God putting on flesh and living among us was his expression of love for us so that he could redeem us, so he would go to the cross on your behalf so you wouldn't have to, so that you could experience the peace that you couldn't earn. And today as we sing these songs, I just want you to call out to him if you need to. But maybe you're a follower of Jesus. Maybe you've been here uh, at, at this church for a while or you have another church that you attend. I want to encourage you to be reminded again of the great peace that you've experienced and the change of perspective that has come on your life now. And now our responsibility to go, just like we had those lights a minute ago and we passed them around the room, the peace that we've received, I want you to consider how you can bring that peace to the world around you as well. I'm going to say a word of prayer, and then our team is going to sing uh, just a couple more songs here, and let's consider the great gift of Jesus and the peace that we have. Let's pray. Jesus, we're so grateful that we have peace with you. We're so grateful that we can experience restored relationship with the Father because you came to live the life we couldn't live. You died the death on the cross that we deserved also that we could experience this restored relationship, this peace with you. So help us, we pray, to honor you on this, on this day that we commemorate uh, as, your, as your birthday. Help us to remember what you've done for us and then be peacemakers, to be people that bring your peace and your light and your love to the world around us. Help us, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Kingdom
Let the praise go up as the walls come down. All creation, everything with breath, repeat the sound. All His children, clean hands, pure hearts, good grace, good God. His name is Jesus. Swing wide, swing wide, all you hear. Thank you for being here with us tonight. We're going to do one more song. Would you please stand and sing with us? Let's sing Joy to the World together. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature see Joy to the world, the Savior reigns Let men their songs employ While fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy Repeat the sounding joy joy to the world joy to the world joy to the world he rules the world with truth and grace and may The glories of His righteousness And wonders of His love And wonders of His love And wonders, wonders of His love And wonders, wonders of His joy Take a minute and thank them for all their work. We are blessed. We're blessed with a great crew. They've spent a lot of time getting this together. I want to just say Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. Um, I know we've got some family members. If I don't get a chance to meet all of you, uh, I would love to. If you, I mean, I know you've probably got places to go, but if you want, I'd love to say hello and meet you. Otherwise, um, Merry Christmas. Have a great rest of your holiday season. Remember that this Sunday we're, we have an online only service at 8.30 and 10.30. You can go to Bethalto.church and find it there. Otherwise, greet one another, say hello and, to each other, and have a great Christmas. We'll see you online on Sunday. God bless.